Alton Heglish Reservoir, which is a bit of a mouthful. Uh, locally known simply as as Banner Dam. Reservoir, which is a bit of a mouthful. Uh, locally known simply as as Banner Dam. My apologies for the sound in this. I'm not using the mic. It's very very quiet here today. So I think I've got a good bit of time just to make up a, a composition here and get ready and get ready for that sun going down. But I think you'll agree, it is a beautiful place. Now. I am here to shoot. I am here to shoot the dam, and the dam's back this way. But I'll highly show you that. Um, I want to get set up. Try and find a composition here with the dam. Sunset's going to go down behind it, or just to the left of it. Uh, can't believe this sky. We haven't had a sky like this in absolute months up here. So, yeah, I'm just going to scramble down, down to the actual reservoir itself, down to the water's edge. Try and get a composition, try and get about a bit of leading line. And just wait for that sky to develop. It is developing nicely. It's just starting to go just a nice orange, just a hint of magenta. Um, so I want to get down here, I want to get set up. I think my composition lies down here somewhere. Right, okay, time for cross country.
But as I've always said, as I've always said, the biggest, I'm no professional. I love doing it, I love getting out, and I love getting a photograph. But as I've always said, when you start doing this here, for me, you've got to get off the path. You've got to not take the photograph that everybody else takes. I'm not getting through there. Um, so I'm going back onto the path. Try and find an easier way down. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to stay on the path and take photographs, then you're going to get the photographs that everybody can take. Which means your photographs, in my opinion, are not going to be much different from everybody else's. And for me, the plan is to find something that no one else has taken. And I honestly do believe that the best way to do that is just to get off the path. Put yourself out, get a little bit dirty, get a little bit wet, and just find something different. Right, I need two hands to go across here. balancing on a, on a boulder here or something. So yeah, I was just looking around trying to find a bit of a composition. Um, the downside of, of, of Banner Dam is that the shoreline itself is pretty much nondescript. There's really nothing, there's no boulders here. Uh, they just flooded a valley. So anything from the side of it's just loads and loads of bracken. Uh, right time of the year it looks, it looks really, really good, but unfortunately at this time of year, um, there's not really much to look at. There's no trees worth photographing along the shoreline. So the clouds are, are forming nicely. Uh, not too many, uh, just enough to take a bit of glow off, off, off the sun. The sun's going down over here. It's going to move its way around here now. It's not going to go the whole way around. Had a quick look on the, the photographer's ephemeris, ephemeris, potato, potato. Um, sun really shouldn't go right behind the, behind the dam, but it should come around enough. Uh, well, this guy, so it is hoping it just lights it up. And so it's just a matter of just sitting here now, uh, probably about a half an hour, and um, we'll we'll see how that sky develops. Tell you what, but when you stop walking, temperature fairly drops very very quickly. So what I've done, I've just slightly moved the composition here, because as I was saying, I wasn't able to find any lead in the line tie up the, 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 uh, the lake with the dam with, with the background um, but by just moving just a few feet what I've actually found here is the silhouette of the trees on this side are casting just a shadow on the water here so what I'm using just on the left hand corner of, of, my, of my frame I've just got the silhouette just leading in and I think that's going to provide enough of a leading line um, I've decided to put the 10 stop filter on there's not much rip, uh, movement on this water, but it's just a few ripples that I just, I just want to put out. Um, yeah, it's just not exactly where it's. I think I'll be half an hour away from where, where I wanted to be. Uh, so I put the set, I put the ten stop on, smooth out that, bring out the vibrance in that sky, that, that lovely blue. We've got those pinks and the magentas going on in, in, in the mid ground, and that's actually casting on to the water as well. But all in all, yeah, it's, look, it's, 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 I think this could be a very, very good photograph. Problem being, I've just taken a test shot. Straight away, 30 second exposure, and it's too dark. Uh, so, right I says, cable release time, get it into bulb mode, get it up into a two minute exposure, and I have forgotten my cable release. Uh, yeah, there's always something. So what I've done here now, I've just upped the ISO to 200, uh, and I'm going to try again here now at, uh, at a 30 second exposure. Now the beauty about the Nikon D800 is this little flip at the back shuts off the eyepiece and stops the light leaks coming in when you're doing long, long exposures. Perfect. All cameras should happen. So here we go. ISO 200, 30 seconds. Two second timer. 
Now, this ground is very, very spongy. It's, it's all like heather and bracken. If I move at all, it's putting vibration into the camera. So I'm just trying to stay as, as still as I possibly can. Now I'm just noticing just some clouds just moving into the shot. Lovely pinks. I'm very happy with that. And I don't mind that it's even if it's a little still a wee bit too too, uh, too dark. The dynamic range on this on this camera, phenomenal. The amount of photographs I've been able to save that just been maybe two stops underexposed, and I've been still able to pull detail out of, out of, out of the shadows. A phenomenal camera, phenomenal camera. And that's partly why I don't use a lot of filters. Because yes, I know there can be a lot of, lot of difference between sky and, and, and foreground. Um, but getting, getting the, the photograph into Lightroom, I can, I can pull back those shadows. So if I expose for the, for the, for the highlights, I, can, I, know, I know it's always going to allow me to pull back the shadows upon those here. Um, filters, maybe somewhere down the line. I don't, I don't know. The only two filters I own are a 10 stop. And I never leave home without a polarizing filter. Two things I, I can't I can't fix or emulate in, in Lightroom, and that's the two filters I use. Probably do have a need for six stop, maybe a couple of stops. Find myself in situations where a ten stop is just too much, but so far they have served me well. So I've had to uh, abandon the spot. And, uh, this guy just didn't develop the way I wanted it to be. Um, everything was there. The sun was there. The clouds were coming in. And uh, it just, just for whatever reason, Mother Nature decided I'm not in the mood for photography tonight. But. Am I disappointed? Not really, because there's times I come out and uh, not really hoping or thinking I'm going to get much and Mother Nature says, come on, let's make something really, really nice. So you gotta, you got to take what you're given in landscape photography. It doesn't always go to plan. Plan as much as you want. But on the day, if it all just doesn't come together, it just doesn't come together. Possibly one of the long exposures. We'll see what it's like when I get it up, but it looked okay in the back of the camera. But I expected to get more than one, but I've always said, photography for me is like, is like fishing. You know, you go out, you spend the whole day. If you go home with one, it's been a great day. And if you don't come home with one, then you spent a bit of time out in nature, recharging the batteries, Calming everything down. Okay, back in the car. Uh, as I said, night does fall very, very quickly out here. It's only about a half an hour's walk from where I was to the car park, but it is pitch black outside. Uh, so that was my first time doing one of these. Um, it's my first time with the equipment. I'm only getting to know the little camera and everything else. I didn't use the mic today, so because I'm interested to see what the pickup is like on the on the internal mic on the little camera itself. Now I did have a lot of problems with the batteries. I was getting about 10 minutes recording at 1080p, 60 frames a second. But once I got it inside inside my in, in, inside my jumper, get it in there for about 15 minutes, then I was able to get about 15 minutes of uh, of shooting after. Not ideal, but. It's not a GoPro, but having said that, it's not the same price as a GoPro. It's about a quarter of the price. I'm interested to see what the video is like. Um, if I'm happy with the video, then you'll be seeing this, or you'll have watched what, just what I've done here today. Um, yeah, but as, as, as I said, landscape photography is one of those things that you can plan and plan for. At the end of the day, if Mother Nature doesn't play ball, then you're not going to get the shot you're going to get, the, the, the shot you were hoping for. Um, 
Did I get a shot? Yes, possibly. I got something on the way home, nice trees and, and, and silhouette. Be interesting to get that up in, on, 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 the, uh, on, the, on the computer and get a look at that. Is it going to be anything special? No. Um, if I like it, you'll get to see it. If I don't like it, then it's not going to see the light of the day. So, if you liked what you saw, then please like. Uh, if you know anybody else that might like it, then share it. And if, well, the plan is to do another one. And, uh, and another one. So if you would like to see another one, um, why not hit the subscribe button? Thanks. See you later. Take care.